and artificial intelligence is about to see a major boost uh, here in this part of Africa, specifically Ghana. This is because a professor at the University of Cape Coast has received a grant of some 30,000 United States dollars to carry out more research. My colleague uh, Richard Kojonyako caught up with uh, Dr. Stephen Moore and asked him why he was interested in artificial intelligence. So my guest today is Dr. Stephen Moore. Dr. Stephen Moore is a senior lecturer here at the Department of Mathematics at the University of Cape Coast. Um, recently there was an article about him that um, Google has given him some money, amount of money, to continue researching in artificial intelligence. We're here to know more about it, to know more about what really he does, what is artificial intelligence anyway, how will it contribute to our national development? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was also kind of a bit of a a shock or a surprise because it is, I, I didn't really think it was going to go um, that far and honestly I got a lot of uh, messages, uh, mails, emails, calls, not just from Ghana, from, from South Africa, from US, from Canada, a lot of interest and a lot of people sending messages saying congratulations, thank you for your work that you are doing. And it's possible for us to know that Africa is also able to solve its own problems in this way. So it was really, um, it was also a bit humbling because of uh, the processes we've been through uh, towards coming to this uh, point. So I can imagine Google themselves, I mean, because they have been on this thread and they, they may have also been contacted you. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I've, I actually spoke, uh, I've had messages as well from the global director, program, global program director, um, and they've, they've all been very, very uh, excited about it. I'm, I'm pretty sure they, they are now thinking, oh, maybe the money was too small, we should have given him bigger money. But yeah, they are also a bit excited that they are getting, uh, they are, something that they've done in Ghana uh, is beginning to show up and people are beginning to see that they are doing something for the society as well so for those of us who didn't read the article i mean tell us about a bit about um what really you won and what led you to win that um so um google has uh, google has been in ghana for over 10 years uh now and they have an office actually in ghana uh, but quite recently that was um last year they decided to relaunch their office in ghana uh, that is in accra and so this, uh, they've now established a very nice office on the Stanchard building. And so they invited uh, us to, they invited me and my colleagues who've been working on this kind of, where doing this kind of research for the past two years now, to make a presentation of what we've been doing. Uh, basically what we've been doing has been translating Ghanaian languages. Um, just as you have a Google translator, our aim has been really to translate our own local languages in such a way that you're able to communicate from a shanty tree to a crapim tree to fancy tree to Ga or to Ewe, Nzima, Dagbani, Dagari, Kusasi, all the local languages. So we've started actually doing it from Ewe, Ga, uh, Asante tree, a crapim tree, and Dagbani. And now we are trying to extend to other languages. And so basically, this, um, the presentation we made, or I made at, a, at their 10th anniversary celebration in Ghana by, at Google headquarters, was to explain to them what we have been doing and what we think is the bottleneck that can be done or what are the improvements that we need to be able to move forward and move faster in this area of work. Because... Google is really is a huge, uh, one of the world's leading, um, I mean, innovators. So when they heard the story, when we pitched to them what we've been doing, they were really interested and got excited about opportunities uh, this presents, not just for translating languages, because the, the knowledge you acquire with this technique to translate languages, you can use that same knowledge in imaging other techniques as well, so that it's possible to map up areas, uh, map buildings, uh, plants, crops, diseases, and stuff like that. So uh, it be, it's, as, it's as become really an interesting also project for, uh, for Google. And they are now looking forward to maybe making Ghana really a hub for 
their uh, natural language processing office, as in doing a lot of translation, research in translation, research in um, imaging techniques all over Africa as well. So how is the development in the uh, artificial intelligence space going to help with the development of this country? Because um, now our attention is gradually shifting to the STEM, uh, the science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Uh, how is it going to really help us build our country? Uh, so uh, artificial intelligence really um, means the ability of computers or humans to interact with computers and for computers to be able to um, make decisions on their own. So this is actually the, the main bottleneck that you'll be, the computer is able to make a decision on its own in a way as if it is with a human being that is reacting or thinking. But the, the interesting thing is that uh, because, uh, uh, of course, for human beings, uh, ability to store information will be limited. The artificial intelligence is such a way that it has very deep abilities if it can reason and make those decisions very, very well. Um, just yesterday, uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of ChatGPT, um, this um, app that is a tool that is able to now create sentences, write stories, write poems, yes. write proposals, and all that. So it comes actually from this idea of large language models, which is part of what uh, trans language translation is. So you can imagine that you have a tool that is now able to write a proposal for you, or is able to generate stories that, given certain keywords, it will be able to generate a story for you to publish and just write and make it as if it is all your own or you take the story, you edit it, and then you make it as your own. And this, this means that um, there are a lot of opportunities, not just in line of this area, but in line of other things, like disease detection. So um, in Ghana, there are already other, come, other small, small uh, startups coming up doing all this kind of work, like Mino Health, which is doing research into disease detection. It means that if you have an X-ray, or some MRI scan, you can put it there, and then it will tell you what the problem is. And this means that uh, doctors, nurse, nurses living in far away villages, when they have such a tool on their phone, or when they have such a tool on their laptop or their computer, will be able to address very, very critical issues that they do not have to longer travel to Kolebu or the teaching hospitals, but just being in those villages far away from the center, they can help take decisions and save human lives. Not only that, but also even here in UCC, with, together with some of my students, they are now, we are developing an app that is able to tell crop diseases in some of the major staple the food crops in Ghana. So if you take cassava, plantain, pepper, we're able to now detect diseases in these plants. And this means that if a farmer has it or if, um, somebody who is into crop production has this tool, they are able to always find out what is happening to my crops, what is happening to my because so the person would just have to key in you just have to, not even key in you just take a picture of your crop and then it tells you uh, this is the disease affecting your crop and then give you like a prognosis give you this disease is treated this way, is treated this way but if you do not understand, contact your, your health your, uh, the plant crop researchers who are around. And so this is, this is a way of improving crop production. It's a way of improving um, farming. That is more than the traditional way of doing it, so that you're able to react faster. It is not only that, but now, um, to over together with the Waskal, we are taking drone images, a lot of pictures of crop yields, farms. That is able to now tell at every week of the crop, what is the height? How should the leaves look like? And with that, it is able to tell any farmer the story of the crop. So that if you are five weeks old of growing your maize, and then you are not seeing the height, the height of your maize is a certain way, the leaves are not looking in a certain fashion, you'll be able to immediately know that there is a problem. Of course, this is something that we have um, crop researchers or uh, horticulturists or farmers who know this by experience. But the future is such like that with these tools, even if you don't have the experience, you have the tool that is able to tell you what to expect. 
if you have low, if you have um, your NPK, your, uh, your nitrogen is going low, it will tell you that nitrogen has dropped, so you need to increase nitrogen. Potassium has dropped, you need to increase potassium. And these are the kind of little, little information that help in crop yield. And so these are the ideas that artificial intelligence in the whole is able to do. Um, it's not all also in this area, but even in the area of teaching and learning, um, nowadays, if I go to class and I teach the student a topic, and then they are shouting, it said this is too difficult or anything. I tell them, look, go to chat GPT and put, your, put it there and say, uh, explain this concept to me. And then you to explain the concept to you, you can get an idea from it. Of course, it is not 100% uh, foolproof that it is correct because sometimes it does make mistakes. So it will give you an understanding of something and then you use that tool as a way to enhance your learning abilities. So that is what these things are. And it is exactly what the future of uh, the world is also going to be in terms of learning, acquiring knowledge, um, doing, you know, many things you can now acquire freely on the internet. But now artificial intelligence is such that it is able to even streamline what you, what you have been searching for consistently. So if you go to online and you're always searching for uh, maybe, usually if you go online, for instance, you buy a shoe, you buy socks, immediately if you're on Amazon, it brings you other suggestions. People who bought this shoe, bought this other shoe. Or people who bought this socks, bought this other socks. Or people who bought a shoe and a socks, considered also bought trousers and shirts. And immediately it is telling you exactly what's, um, what to look out for after doing a purchase. And this is even common with us. When we go to the marketplace, if you go to the market right now, to Kotokaba or Abra market, and you, ask, you go there, you buy beans, you see the people around, all the market sellers, they'll be trying to figure out what to sell to you. When you buy your beans, they'll be saying, oh, madam, I have plantain. Because they'll be thinking, beans goes with plantain. If you want to prepare gobe. Exactly. So if, if, you, if you tell them, no, I'm not going to buy plantain, then they are thinking of, you have bought beans. You don't want plantain. What exactly can go with it? Right. Exactly. So then the rice seller comes in and says, Madam, I have rice here. It's very good. And the moment you buy the rice, then they are, you are falling into their trap because they know exactly what you are going to prepare. Then the people selling the wache leaves and all start coming to you because they know you are going to do wache and stuff. So it's exactly the same thing we've been doing in the marketplace that now we've translated them into this area of artificial intelligence called recommender systems. So if you go to Netflix and you consistently watch action movies, you see that it is suggestion. Uh, your next suggestions are all action movies because it's like you've been watching action movies. If you've been watching a lot of, to be, it will start sending to you so because you watch this movie. Exactly, um, this is also something for you for you to watch and immediately it streamlines you and it helps you in your search or in what you you've been looking for consistently. And this is the, how artificial intelligence comes about in our daily lives. Um, even for governance and for policy making, um, something that we plan to do in the future is that uh, we know a lot of decisions in courts in, from all over Ghana. Sometimes uh, it, you must think about it. Some of the decisions being taken, the same, the same story, the same thing, the same facts in Cape Coast. The person gets sentenced five years. The person, the same thing in, in the Tamale. The person gets sentenced 20 years, and someone will say it's because of how they argued the case. But these are all things that we can put to a test and then put into a system where we know for a fact that how, if people still cassava plantain, how many years are they given on average? And we begin to strike these bottlenecks in a way that it is able to build a recommender system. So if you still this, 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 you can tell oh, this is the average that you should get. And every lawyer will, will be streamlined and trained towards, if you have these kind of problems, this is what you get. And not only that, uh, even now there are tools that are able to tell diseases or give you a list of likely diseases, differentiable, we call them differentiables. 
So if you go to the hospital, you say you have headache, you have fever, you have this, you have this. The doctor, if maybe it's typhoid fever, but the doctor will start from malaria treatment. If it doesn't, if it's persists, then it goes to typhoid. But now we are building these things also in artificial intelligence such that if you go to the, you don't even have to go to the hospital, you can type in on the, on the internet, disease, I have these symptoms, I have these symptoms, and it brings to you immediately likely possible diseases that you are suffering from. So even if you're a doctor and you are using such a tool, immediately it helps streamline your work. You know, it helps you, it helps you understand what are the likely options of the persons, the diseases the person is going to have. So this is how artificial intelligence is boosting production. It's going to help improve our abilities to solve problems and then our ability to increase yield in farming or ability to know when to go to fishing, when not to go fishing, when to avoid certain plants, when not to avoid certain plants. And these are all the things that artificial intelligence is going to help us achieve in, the, in total. So there are so many people that are expressing some fears that while well, artificial intelligence is here, you see, do this and it does it. Write a story. So very soon, journalists, a lot of us, will be knocked out of our jobs because now you go out there, you just put in the thing you key in, and then it writes the story for you. It will reduce the numbers that employers would be employing. Is that, I mean, is it a concern that has come to you? Um, yes, yes. Uh, this is uh, an increasing concern. Many people keep raising about artificial intelligence. But, um, of course, uh, before cars came, I'm sure people would be, or people who were carrying people in palanquins uh, about would have been worried that, oh, now we are not going to get people to carry about in palanquins. But the, the, the reality is that uh, whenever there is a new uh, industrial revolution, some jobs are lost because they, they lose relevance of the markets. And some tools that are created will take over those tools. Uh, so you can imagine the olden days typewriters and stuff that are now almost in, in, uh, in extinction because of computers and printers that are now found in everywhere, even on your phones. So some jobs will be lost definitely with the rise of artificial intelligence because it is going to take care of a lot of things but it also means that a lot of other jobs will be opening there will be a lot of a lot more jobs are opening up and honestly now uh, if you just the, the amount of jobs um, that artificial intelligence has, is creating is far more than the people it is employing so there's a huge market gap of about 300,000 jobs that are created and there are no people don't want to fill in so that is actually something that even as a country, we need to leverage on. You need to see exactly what the future is and immediately start addressing it. So if you go to Europe now, just go online and check. There are, there are many companies looking for data scientists or data engineers or people with expertise in AI. And it is lacking. Not many people are doing it. It's, it sounds as if they are, it is everywhere and everybody is doing it. But it is not really everybody doing it. There are very few people in that area, in that space. And so there's a lot of potential for people to go in there and get the jobs. And so as a country, if we can start addressing the things that are needed for the markets, we will be able to train our people and leverage on it for them to get jobs. The jobs that matter. And look, um, now people are living in Ghana and working in the U.S., People are living in Ghana and working in, in Canada and working in Germany because all that matters is your ability to solve the problem and then get internet access. That is all. If you have internet access and then you have the skill, you can get employed everywhere over the world. And so you can imagine if there are 100,000 Ghanaians who are employed everywhere in the world and are still living in Ghana. They have the money, they have good salaries, they'll be enjoying, they'll be building, the economy will increase as, as a matter of their salaries. So that is exactly the kind of um, opportunities AI presents. And it is such that the, if you have the knowledge, it is, not, uh, it is not a knowledge that you say you have an AI knowledge for Ghana or you have an AI knowledge that is only restricted to Nigeria or Africa. 
it is an it is a global a worldwide knowledge once you have it and you have it right and of course you can get a playback of that uh, interaction uh, with my colleague richard kojinyako on all of our social media platforms but for now